empirical and molecular formula, what they are and how to derive them. So empirical formula. Empirical formula is the simplest whole number ratio of atoms within a compound. For example, glucose would be CH2O. Now, this is in comparison to a molecular formula, which is the actual number of each atom present in the compound. Glucose's full molecular formula is C6H12O6. So you can see here, if you divide all of these numbers by 6, the simplest whole number ratio is 1 carbon, 2 hydrogens and 1 oxygen. Carbon divided by 6 is 1, hydrogen divided by 6 is 2, and oxygen divided by 6 is 1. Molecular formula. Okay, so molecular formula can be determined from its empirical formula, but only if its molar mass is also known. And we use this formula here. The molecular formula is equal to a whole number times its empirical formula. And I'm going to show you what I mean. Use glucose as an example again, because you're already familiar with that. So glucose, its molecular formula is C6H12O6. Its empirical formula is CH2O. That's just dividing all of them by 6. So if we go back the opposite way, the molecular formula is its empirical formula multiplied by the whole number 6, which is exactly what we've just said here. The molecular formula is the empirical formula multiplied by the whole number. So what we need to be able to work out is what this whole number is. And that's what I'm going to show you. So using glucose as an example, if the question states, what is the empirical formula of glucose? Oh, sorry, the empirical formula of glucose is CH2O. What's its molecular formula? The first thing we need to know is or we can work out is the molec or the molar mass of CH2O of the empirical formula and that equals 30 grams per mole. Now I've just worked that out by adding 12 plus 16 plus 2 times 1 and that'll equal 30. Now we have to get told in the question what the molar mass of the molecular formula is. Otherwise, we can't work this out. So in the question here, it's telling you that it's 180 grams per mole. So all we need to do is find out how many units of this fit into this. So the number of CH2O units in the compound equals the molar mass of the compound divided by the molar mass of the empirical formula. In this case, that equals 180 divided by 30, which equals 6. You can clearly see that 6 of these 30 gram per mole units are going to fit into the 100 gram per mole unit of the entire compound. So if we've got the number 6 here, we just need to multiply that by its empirical formula, and we will get the molecular formula, which is C times 6, which is C6, H2 times 6, which is H12, and oxygen times 6, which is O6. If, oh, here's another example question for you. So the empirical formula of hydrazine is NH2. What's its molecular formula? Okay. So... Again, the question needs to tell you what the, molec or what the molecular formula's um, molar mass is. And it tells you here that it's 32 grams per mole. You can then calculate that the empirical formula's molar mass equals 16 grams. So 14 for the nitrogen and 1 each for the hydrogen. Once you've got this information, you can continue with the question by just dividing it as we did before. So the molar mass of the compound divided by the molar mass of the empirical formula, which equals 32 divided by 16, which equals 2. So there's two 
of these NH2 units in the compound. So the molecular formula equals 2 times NH2, which equals N2H4. 2 N's and H2 times 2 is H4. If you're feeling confident, have a go at this question here. I'll give you a hint. Make sure you work out the molar mass of CH and you're told what the molar mass of the entire compound is. So you should be able to work that out. So give this a pause, have a go, and I'm going to work through the solution for you. Okay, so the answer you should have gotten is C6H6. So if you've gotten that answer, you don't need to watch any more of this video. If not, I'm going to put the work solutions up for that and also the work solutions for number 29 and 30 in your booklet so you can watch those. Okay, so let's have a look. We can work out the molar mass of CH. It just equals 12 plus 1, which equals 13 grams per mole. We're told the molar mass of the compound, which is 78 grams per mole, which is in the question there. So all we're doing now is dividing the molar mass of the compound divided by... So all we're doing now is dividing the molar mass of the compound divided by the molar mass of the empirical formula, which is CH. So 78 divided by 13, which equals 6. So we've got 6 NH2. So all we're doing now is working out how many CH units are in the compound by dividing the molar mass of the compound divided by the molar mass of the empirical formula CH. So it's 78 divided by 13, 6. So there's 6 CH units in the compound. 6 of these will make up one of the whole compound. So the molecular formula equals 6 times CH, which equals C6H6.